Hello, hello, John. It's uh, it's Robert here. Oh, Robert. Yeah, hi. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Uh, where do we start? I'll put you on speaker. I can put my hands down there. Yes, of course. Of course. There thank we you. Go. Um, well, um, I was looking at the JW.org site, and it, I was looking at the Watchtower Society's claims for itself, because that to me seems fairly central and fairly yep. important. Um, now, it, the Watchtower says that it is a spirit-directed organisation. That's the Watchtower, April 2017, page 5, paragraph 11. Yeah. Yet, according to an earlier Watchtower, February Watchtower, 2017, page 24, paragraph 12, it's not inspired. So it is spirit-directed, but it's not inspired. Not inspired, no. And yet... That's right. According to your dictionary, Insight on the Scriptures, Volume 1, page 1202, the word inspiration means to be spirit-directed. So if you're spirit-directed, then you are inspired. If you're inspired, you're spirit-directed. Yet the Watchtower says it is spirit-directed, April 2017, Watchtower, yet it's not inspired, February 2017, Watchtower. Yeah, well, uh, the members of the organisation never have claimed to be inspired. Um, the scriptures we know are inspired because all scriptures are inspired of God. Um, that, that, that all, all the scripture that was written yeah. was written under the inspiration of God. The, the, the memory directed as to what, not word for word to write, but to write down what God thought was the thoughts that had to be transmitted. But I mean, the publications that uh, are produced are not inspired. Uh, uh, they really what we've looked at and how we've read and interpreted the scriptures uh, and interrelated with various scriptures to come to a conclusion uh, and a reasoning on it. And so none of the uh, organisation members would claim to be inspired of themselves, but the organisation as a whole uh, works under the direction or feel is directed by the Holy Spirit to direct them in whatever means or needs they feel see the need of. Um, but how is that possible, John? Because your insight in the scriptures, volume one, page 1202, says that to be inspired is to be spirit directed. Let me just read it to you. Inspiration. The quality or state of being moved by or produced under the direction of a spirit from a superhuman source. When that source is Jehovah, the result is pronouncement or writings that are truly the word of God. So inspiration means to be spirit directed spirit directed means to be inspired if the watchtower is spirit directed then it is inspired if it's not inspired then it can't be spirit directed because the two words are interchangeable according to your dictionary insight on the scripture volume one page 1202 that's what i i don't get sir yeah No, 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 sir, sir, I don't care about your viewpoint. I've never met you. It's not important to me. I don't live my life according to other people's viewpoints. So I don't want to hear what your viewpoint is. Um, the only thing that's important is what does the scriptures say and what does the Watchtower say? Now, the Watchtower says of itself that it is a spirit directed organization. Watchtower, April 2017, page five. But the February 2017 Watchtower, page 24, says it's not inspired by God. But to be inspired means to be spirit-directed. Let me read the it writing, again. The, writing, the writings in the Watchtower are not inspired. Well, then not why do I need it? If it's not inspired, why do I need it? Why don't I just go by the Bible? Well, you, you go by the Bible, then that's right. Um, it may well be that there'll become a time when we won't have any publications whatsoever and the Bible will be the only thing that remains. You know, the way this system works, you know, the, the persecution that's being heaped upon Jehovah's Witnesses, there where a lot of the publications are on the ban. They can't get publications. What the publications, persecution? We can, manage, we can manage without the publications, but we can't manage without the, the Bible. Yeah. Um, publications there help us to appreciate and understand what the Bible is actually trying to tell us. But how can they help you if they're not inspired? I mean, y y I mean, do you believe the Mormons are inspired? The reason, the reason and logic, as you, you know, compare one text with another, and you can 
all those together to uh, see how these work together to come to a conclusion, you know, which everybody makes their own decision, obviously. Right. Um, in, in the past, I mean, the Watchtower has said that God, Jehovah, sends angels to this earth to pass message to his remnant here upon the earth. Um, that's Vindication Book 3, page 250. I, I looked at some of the older literature and it said that angels, it said since, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, since 1919, angels who are invisible to the human eye have been passing messages from the Lord, that's Jehovah, I believe, to the remnant here on earth. So Jehovah speaks to the remnant here on earth by passing messages to them via angels. Now, Vindication was published in goodness knows what year. It was a long, long time ago, and I've been in 60 years, and it was long before I came into the truth. 1932. Yeah, so it was long before, yeah. well, not long before I was born, but it was a few years before I was born. But, and but, it, but it, when that book know, was published, it was the truth, you see, wasn't it? They believed well, that book was the truth that, when it was published. The truth as was perceived by them at the time. But don't forget, what was perceived by, as the truth by the apostles in Jesus' day was that they were re Jesus would re-establish the kingdom while he was on the earth. They hadn't got the point. They needed clarification. And since, then, since 1932, we've had clar certain clarification on certain things as to the way Jehovah directs the organization. Right. I mean, was that true? When, when Rutherford wrote in Vindication that... Since 1919, angels who are invisible to the human eye have been passing messages from the Lord to the remnant here on earth. And that's a, that's a paraphrase. I mean, was that true or was that a lie or, or what? It, was, it possibly wasn't true. And it, uh, uh, but there are other things that have been uh, in the publications that we've had to clarify and readjust as we've got a better understanding. Right. OK. Of course, it... If they've changed their beliefs over the years, do you think that the present beliefs that you hold now in the year 2020, do you think those beliefs could be changed? Do you think there'll be changes over the next couple of years where they change their beliefs again? So that what, that what is taught now no longer is truthful? Uh, the, the, the major basic truths of the Bible are not going to change. They're, they're, they're exactly the same. Uh, what we will see in a couple of years' time we still have to wait to get the scriptural understanding of it. All the prophecies and the things that were spoken about in the scriptures have appeared to be as we currently believe and as we currently publish. Okay, okay, John. Um, uh, moving on, I've looked on the JW.org site at, at various watchtowers, and I've been quite shocked to, to find that the Watchtower states that the United Kingdom, my country, and the USA, America, are of the devil. That's the Watchtower, 15th of September, 1982, page 17 and 18. I was kind of shocked at that, sir. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't have thought so, because the scriptures tell us quite plainly that the whole world lies in their power of the devil. He's the ruler of this system of things, so we know it's, it's all... <clears throat> the devil is behind everything in this system of things. Everything, everything including well, Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses? kingdom of god the heavenly kingdom yes when it says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one do you include jehovah's witnesses in that yourself your governing no. body no pardon As jesus said we're no part of the world yes you quoted 1 john five nineteen. the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one wicked one is the devil are you saying that every single person on earth, without exception, is under the sway of the devil? Is that what you're saying? You're saying that the devil is the ruler of this world and he's endeavouring to turn people away from the truth. You're not answering my question? 1 John 5.19, which you quoted, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Does the whole world mean every single person on earth without exception? We're all susceptible to the sway of the devil. No. <laughs> 1 John 5 19 we know that we're of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one I'm reading from the New King James Version is the whole world there every single person on earth today in the year 2020 yes or no under the sway of, yeah we're all, we're all affected by the 
affected by what the devil does. Every single person on earth? Yeah. Including yourself then? Because you've just said every person on earth yeah. is under the sway of yeah. the devil. That would include yourself and the, the Jehovah's Witnesses, all eight million of you, and your governing body. You've just said yeah. they're also under the sway of the wicked one. We could be susceptible to what he's trying to do, and that is to turn everybody away from serving God. Well, if you are under the sway of the wicked one, why do I need to listen to you? I'd rather read my Bible and focus on um, what Christ says in the Bible than listen to people who, by your own admission, are, 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 are under the sway of the devil, John. Well, that, that would be your choice. No, is it sensible to listen to somebody who says, I am under the control or the sway of the devil? under the control of the devil. I said the world is being affected by what the devil tries to do. You said the whole world include every single person on earth today, and you said that, in, that would therefore include yourself. And direct the whole world, including me. Now, I can make a choice. I can either fall in line with the things that he would endeavour us to do, or we can stand against it and do what the scriptures tell us to do. But we're still going to be affected. Well, I mean, even Jesus was under the was affected by the devil. Wasn't no, he? Jesus was not in any way under the sway of the devil. He gave his life voluntarily. He took the sins of the world upon himself voluntarily. Satan had no power or no authority over Christ. Um, you're, you're, you're taking 1 John 5, 19 completely out of context, sir. Read it from verse 18. This is a simple contrast between two groups. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. The Greek is practiced sin as a habit. Okay? But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one doesn't touch him. We know that we are of God. We know, used twice, is first person plural. So John is identifying himself with his listeners who are this first group, people who have been born of God. And then the contrast is people who haven't been born of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So it's a contrast between two groups in 1 John 5, 18 and 19. The people who've been born of God and the people who haven't been born of God. Pardon? How could he offer all the world and the authority of their world to Jesus? Sorry, just say that again. I'm, I'm listening to you, John. If the, devil, if the devil isn't having an influence and controlling the world, how in that third temptation could he offer all the world and the authorities and the governments and the powers of the world to Jesus for one act of worship? Jesus would have just poo-pooed the idea and said, you don't own the world, you can't do that. Jesus recognised that he had the power and the authority. Well, if you look at the book of Psalms, Psalm 24, 1 says that, that Jehovah owns this earth. So you firstly need to define who, who owns this earth. Does Jehovah own this earth? Does Satan yeah. own this earth? Or do Satan and Jehovah <laughs> both own the earth? Please let me finish, John. Could you please firstly tell me who owns this earth? Is it Jehovah, Psalm 24, 1? Is it Satan? Or thirdly, do, do, do Jehovah and Satan co-own the earth? Jehovah owns the earth, you know that. Right, Jehovah. so if Jehovah owns the earth, in Matthew 4, you have, um, it's not a physical thing that Satan is offering Jesus, it's, it's, it's spiritual. Okay, Satan is the ruler over those people who are in rebellion to God. And it's not the physical things in this earth, the trees, the plants, the roads, the buildings, the gold, the silver. It's not those physical things. Could I finish? It's not those physical things that Satan is offering to Jesus. It's the people who are in rebellion to him. All right, it's, 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 it's a spiritual kingdom that Satan is offering. As a means of... Just as a matter of interest. Pardon? What religion are you as a matter of interest? Oh, I used to be an evangelical Christian, but I gave up 10 okay. years ago. Well, I don't go anywhere have. for 10 years. John? I'll I tell you now. I don't attend anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere for 10 years. Yeah. Um, your book, um, What Can the Bible Teach Us?, um, says that all governments belong to Satan. That's page 33, the end of paragraph 11. Would that include the British government? Under the influence of Satan the devil. And would that also include my government, the British government? The head of the British government is the crown. Would, would they yeah. be part of this? Everyone is subject to the devil. I'm not interested in everyone. I'm not interested in everyone. I asked you a question. Is my government... Please let me finish. 
John, is my government, the British government, and the Crown, which is the head of the British government, do they belong to Satan? Because your book says, what can the Bible teach us? Page 33, paragraph 11, quote, all governments belong to Satan. So I'm just asking you, does my government and the Crown, which is the head of the British government, also belong to Satan? I'm not asking about all of them. I'll repeat, I'm asking you about the British government and the crown which is the head of the British government. I'm, 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 I'm afraid that we're not going to get anywhere with this conversation. You're not asking Please any don't. questions, mate. It's, Please don't ring again. We're just getting nowhere. I thought you were interested and wanted to look at the truth. I, I have taken the time to read your... I've taken the time to read your literature. But you don't answer any questions. You're just like preacher boys that I've met in the evangelical churches who hide in the pastor's office. You don't answer okay. people's questions. Now, John, I'm asking you a fair question. Your book, for the third time, What Can the Bible Teach Us?, published 2015, page 33, paragraph 11, says, quote, All governments belong to Satan. I just want to know, sir, please answer my question directly. Don't obfuscate. Don't dance around the topic. Does my that's government, that's which the is question. the British government, and the crown belong to Satan? I'm not asking about all governments. Gosh, you, 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 you oh, gosh. He doesn't answer a straight question. Mm.